Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. I hope that you're doing well. Today's video is on desire. The reason why I want to talk about desire is because someone once told me if you want to end all suffering of mankind, then you must be desireless. So it made me think about what desire means and the role it plays with the universe. So for me, desire means to want something, right? Because when you desire something, you really want something, right? So I even wondered whether there were different types of desires. And then I understood that, yes, there are different types of desires. There's the desire of the ego and there's the desire of the heart. Now, what I understood from that statement is those who desire from their ego they are most likely going to be suffering so you know i can give you an example of like someone who's very rich and then they just want to keep getting richer and they're just never satisfied so they desire more and they keep desiring more and then the universe gives you what you want usually because that's that emotion of desire is so powerful it's so strong and then when you receive what you desire, they're still not happy. Like, oh, I want a yacht. And then they get a yacht. And they're still not happy. Oh, I want a really high net worth. They get a really high net worth and they're still not happy. And it just amplifies every time. Oh, I want to marry the most beautiful girl in the world. They marry the most beautiful girl in terms of looks in the world because they are functioning from ego's desire why do you want to marry this person because perhaps it has to do with your status so the way the universe works with desire is really interesting because the universe will obviously give you what you want but is it good to desire from a state of suffering we're not talking about like someone who's like i desire to drink water in the middle of the sahara that and then they see an oasis you know we're not talking about that extreme desire we're just talking about us everyday day-to-day -day desire for example someone who wants to climb the the ladder in their workplace and they just want a better opportunity at work they want a better opportunity at work and that's just causes that creates desire and then they get another opportunity instead of feeling grateful they become more greedy so what I understood from this statement, in order to end suffering of mankind, it is better to be desireless. This basically has to do with greed. There's obviously a lot of greed in our world and a lot of people are just not satisfied with what they have. And so they keep desiring more. And the more they keep desiring, remember this is desire from the state of the ego, the more they suffer. The more they're like, oh, I want more subscribers, I want more subscribers, I desire more subscribers. If I don't have more subscribers, then no one's going to respect me, no one's going to look at me in a correct manner. I don't know. You know, just no one's going to love me is a common one if I don't have enough subscribers. Everything rooted in desire has to do with lack. Why do we desire? Because there is a lack because we see a lack so universe is like oh you see a lack okay here i'm going to give you what you want quickly fills it up with whatever we desire from the ego right and then even then on we still see a lack and that is really dangerous because when you see a lack you become more greedy you become more i don't know more negative because you're seeing a lack so, because you keep seeing a lack, oh, I don't have a Lamborghini, oh, I don't have a Mercedes, oh, I don't have this. And then the universe keeps giving you some other stuff and you're still upset. Obviously, you have to put in effort to make your desires come true, right? Which is very normal and that has to do with the universe. You have to put in the intention and you have to put in the work. And that is how our world works, right? But what's happening is that a lot of people are creating desire in our world. If you think about fashion, a lot of girls die for fashion, man. They die to wear these branded clothes and they still have desire. They still have desire to have the next purse. They still have desire to have the, the other shoes that 
that's just marketed because to create a desire. Oh, the celebrity is wearing Louboutins, so why aren't you wearing Louboutins? Louboutin means status, status. Louboutin means class. Louboutin means like you're somewhere in the ladder of society. And these girls fall for this trap 24-7 because they desire it. They desire to be somewhere in society. They want people to look at them when they're walking in Louboutins because it's marketed that way. And then, and then you think about how cheaply Louboutins are made and how expensive they are to, to buy. You're like, is it worth it? I studied advertising. And so when I, what I learned from advertising is that everything is about desire. The more desire you create, the more insane the world becomes too. Because the more we desire things, the more crazy we become em emotionally and mentally. I don't want to use the word crazy, please. I would like to apologize that I used the word crazy, but more intense you become in your mind. And so what what is this desire game? If advertising revolves around desire, if marketing revolves around desire, and we are just desiring the next job, the next this, the next that, the next tech, tech is huge with desire. You're not wearing an, uh, an Apple watch, then you're not cool enough. You know, like, so this is when I jump in on how to become desireless. In a world that is dominated by ego's desires, we want to work on becoming desireless. Because when you become desireless, you immediately acknowledge that there is no lack in your life. So now you will be switching the game and you'll be working with the heart's desire, which is a lot more powerful. A lot more powerful and it's gonna get you to the highest realms ever so the ego is all about society right like I want the next car I want these shoes I want these clothes I want they the ego says I want the heart says it would be nice if I had this notice how the language is different because the ego will present itself and say I want this right now the heart would say, it would be nice if I had this, but I already have so much, so thank you. The heart's desire is different because the heart works with love. So you are already saying in your heart that it would be nice to have this, but I already have this. You are in a world of abundance immediately because you're not seeing lack. So when you're not seeing lack, you're not suffering at all. You're just seeing things for what it is. I hope that makes sense because when you are working with the ego and the ego is desiring, it's seeing lack. But what's a really big game changer is when you work with the heart. Of course, desire is good, but hey, you already have so much. Is there really a lack? If you are in a place where you feel like you don't have anything, start appreciating your body. Start appreciating your white blood cells, your red blood cells, your nervous systems, your veins. Start appreciating how your body is functioning and immediately you will go in a state of abundance. So when you start working with the heart, immediately you start seeing that you have everything you need and more. You are abundant. When you start working with the heart, you are not interested in society and, uh, and having material things. You're, you become more interested in like, it would be cool if I had this. It would be nice. It would be cool if I had this experience. And the heart immediately comes in and says, I want to give you this as a present. But guess what? You're not in a state of desire because you are seeing abundance around you. When you are seeing abundance around you, you become desireless because you already have everything. You already have the perfect job. Perhaps it's not evolving as fast as you're evolving, but trust me, you are in the most perfect world ever. 
When you start seeing perfection in our world, you don't see lack. Those who desire don't see perfection in our world. They don't see perfection within themselves. They don't even see perfection with the way they look. They're like, oh, I don't have this dress. Oh, I'm not wearing Manolo's, so everyone's going to look down at me. Dude. This is how I became desireless. It's just a secret that I wanted to share with you today. Because when you work with the heart, it really creates a state of abundance in the world. The heart will always give you all your wishes. All your wishes will come true if you work with the heart. But when you work with the ego, and you, you are concerned with how people look at you, and how people will uh, you know, accept you, and if you don't have that house, if you don't have that car, if you don't have that education, if you didn't go to a certain school with that certain branding and marketing that's been done since eons to make you believe it's the, the schools of all schools, don't worry. When you go to your place, your happy place is in your heart. And this is how you become desireless, guys. This is how you end all suffering. Because when you start working with the heart, you don't see any lack. You just see abundance and you just see joy and you say, it's cool. It's cool if I have this experience. It's not like, I need this experience, I need to go to this party, I need to wear... No. I need to meet this person because it improves my social... You're going to suffer. You're going to be in pain. So this is my little secret that I wanted to share with you guys. Not many people discuss this. Not many people even know how to become desireless, but I'm letting you know this is the way to become completely desireless and this is the way to appreciate what you have in your life. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye.